Hello ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. This is actually a vloggy, video-y kind of thing. Normally I would actually do it like it's a full screen thing with me covering over most of the background and uh, we're just talking to each other, but I have uh, to fix some technical issues because we've had a stream break about halfway, but halfway through my stream earlier on today. And this kind of came back as a revelation thing that I was going like, right, I have to remember to do these things at the top of every episode. And I thought, right, if I can get this information out as a vlog, it might be a better idea. So what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do, it's kind of cohesion this broadcast and stream together a little bit more so we have regularly anticipated content. Uh, previously, I was on a very loose schedule of there being a particular thing that comes out on a Monday, a particular thing that comes out on a Wednesday, a particular thing that comes out on a Friday, and a particular thing that comes out on a Saturday. And the problem with those are it's dependent on the available content at the time. So I kind of never scheduled that down and locked it into place because I might not have a game that fits that particular bent or plan or organization in the future and part of the reason why is because it's really scheduled these schedules are uh, they're not they're not under my control they're under the control of the people who publish and broadcast so i can get my hands on whatever i can get my hands on and we'll do that as best we can but what i can control is what we do during the live streams and it's been i feel i've been streaming so much more now it feels like i need to plan out what we're going to do in a stream rather than meandering conversations and picking up a game because the wall of choice, the biggest problem whenever I'm picking a game is that there's that many that I have to either play for the purposes of making a show or things I want to play because I want to play with the people who are in the chat or play because I just want to play that game. So I need to actually break down the schedule a little bit more and you guys can then know when I'll be here and what I'll be doing. So my plan is that I want to do three days a week where the stream has, has a schedule, has, a, has something that's going to be done. And then other times outside of that is additional shows and additional content. And the way I've worked it out is that I want to do three days a week. We haven't decided on the days yet, which I'm kind of hoping that you guys want to participate in this process and help me know what days work best for you. Uh, way we're going to do it is one day a week is going to be a multiplayer show. I want to play with the community. I want to play with other people. I want to play multiplayer games. You kind of need to spend enough time to set up for that. And you want to have as many people join you as possible. And I want to actually spread out the game, multiplayer games that I play. So I want to take games as recommendations from you guys. Uh, games, so it's games that you have that you want me to play with you. Rather than me going like, hey guys, I've got this. Do you have it? And then there being a disconnect about who has what. So uh, easy ones it'll be with is free to play games. So everybody can get access to the game if they want to play it or games that are actually prevalent enough that I would have a copy of it and you might have a copy of it. But we can have that conversation on a page like this, on the Patreon page, where I'll be putting up a post that actually will have a list of every game that I own on multiple consoles, on PS3, on PS Vita, on PS4, on PC. And the intention is to put up a large enough list that you guys can go in and vote and pick the game that you want to have for each of the multiplayer sessions. Because most of the games that I'll have, and anything I'll put on that list, will be games that I've already played, I've already done an episode for, or I have had long ago, and never did, it never brought it onto the show because I never thought, right, well, I like that game, but somebody else might not want to play that game, uh, or every, you know, nobody wants to know about that game, because it's old. <laughs> I never thought that old games are bad, it's just that old games are no, probably not in the current consciousness of the playing public so they might not be thinking about that game or would ever think to ask for that game by putting it on the list it means it's easy for you guys to pick one out with the multiplayer game list it will also include a link to the video i did for that game on the channel so i'm gonna if it's a game that i've already played on the channel i'll hyperlink to a video that i've done of that game if it's a multiple game or a multiple video series or and multiple videos I've ever done about that game, they'll all be compiled together into a playlist and then I'll add that to the channel. It may not be a public playlist, but it'll be a playlist that you can access through at least the Patreon document or the Google Docs that I might make for it or whatever, the, the source document. The second day of broadcasting will be a show recording day. So like I always have done, before anybody even came to watch the stream, before anybody came to watch me play, I will have the stream live and recording the episodes of Cold Open, of Made in Japan, of Free Play Friday, of 
uh, what other shows? What, WTAF? Because I wanted to do more WTAF stuff because, my God, there is so much WTAF uh, news stories about gaming lately. And I've, don't, I've purposely not got myself involved in them because I have an opinion, but I don't want to join the brain masses. But sometimes it's getting to the point where I'm just going, why am I not? Why am I not just making a video about it? Because I have a version of, I have a version of the events and I have an opinion that sometimes is a conflagration of other people's ideas. So I might have heard, say, Jim Sterling talking about a topic, but TB had an alternate opinion on it. But at the same time, Philip DeFranco did a mainstream video that only mentioned like his opinion, but to completely ignore these two other people who have a very valid and informed opinion and backed opinion that actually would be worthwhile sharing with everybody else. So at least then I can just grab all three and go like, right, so he has a legal argument. He's using a different a personal argument and he's actually using a populist argument. And the three things actually do combine together to make something that might actually be the general consensus we could get from this. And that's what I want to do with the WTAF show. And that's that space by knowing that I'm going to be recording shows for particular games and then set inside space that I can just have a discussion with you guys, either via the chat, like a podcast or as a... A short form video which will be about a single point a single story then i will be able to put that together and send it on to you but if it's send it on to the channel for anybody else to watch and of course if it's like a discussion i'm looking for input from anybody who's on the live stream so it would be nice to have that especially if i find myself getting onto a point that's contentious and people have opinions on but nobody's actually said it said, it said their piece yet i'll happily listen to it in fact there's a reason why we have a discord we'll be able to do this as a audio chat, or as an audio podcast, I'll be I'll be the only person on camera, but it'll still be able to do it as if it's a telephone in conference thing, almost like a radio show more than anything else. And I would like that. I would like to do that with the show recordings in the future, especially with guests for games uh, that I don't know anything about. I would, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is actually reaching out to PR guys and companies that are actually distributing the games. And while I'm doing a cold open or after I do a cold open, just inviting them to actually join a chat for a wee minute so I can talk about the game and they can give they can give they can give their version of the sale on the game if they want to. I would I, I'd be interested in doing that because I wouldn't mind talking to the people who really, really enjoy a game, especially if I don't get it, if I don't enjoy it, because I've had a couple of really good conversations with devs that make indie games and I've gone come to the round to see their opinion afterwards, but then it's not in the same video. It's actually a, a conversation I've had afterwards or posted underneath in the comments. And it does reflect either badly on me or badly on their game and or just badly on the industry in general that it's not an on it's not a living discussion it's not alive it's just one person's shouted opinion and i'm don't, not a big fan of that i like to like to hear a couple of sides all at the same time especially if we can all be civil about it uh the third day of recording is planned to be for just non-gaming related content so it'll be a day where i'll record shows like anime like or I will have a talk, Tales from the Tables, which I'm looking to do is talk about some of my D&D experiences and tabletop experiences and things I've read and characters that I've actually heard about in fiction that would make really, really good uh, jumping off points for other people to create characters or really cool events that actually have happened in gameplay with the permission of the people I play D&D with, not using their real names, but using either their character names or a version of it. Uh, kind of like what Spoonie used to do for Counter Monkeys. So I'd like to do that as my third day where I can do a riff. Oh, hi there, Amido. How's it going? It's nice to see you. Thank you very much for joining us in the live chat. Um, middle of recording a small vlog here, uh, just talking about what I'm planning to do with the channel over the next little while. Um, you're more than welcome to join us. Thank you very much for jumping in. <laughs> you're not the only person, you're not the only anime person in the world. Literally what I was just talking about is what I'm going to do with one of the days of my live broadcasts on the schedule is to record shows like Anime Like, which I post up on the YouTube channel, which is me recording a description of a show, giving its best points, some of its interesting points, and some of its weirdest points, and only being allowed to talk about it as long as the OP is. So mattering on the show, I have more or less time so literally, it's a video starts, OP plays, and I'm describing a show until the OP ends, and then just literally going, goodbye. <laughs> and that's all the video is. If you can't explain, it's like the elevator pitch for anime. If you don't, if you can't explain a show in the time it takes for the OP to finish, then you, and the person isn't already going like, I need to watch that, then maybe the show's not that great. 
in what sense? What sense? Uh, one point. What? Yeah, that sometimes it actually is about a minute thirty. Like, I'm, you get, ninety seconds is enough to actually kind of learn of whether or not you want to watch a show. And some OPs are damn long. Some are also very short. Some are like uh, 30, 20, 30 seconds. Especially on even the, the ones that are like um, I've married an otaku and I have no idea what he's saying. Each episode is only three minutes long, so you'd have to do it during the end credits. The end credits are about a minute and a half. So I actually use the ending, uh, the ED rather than the OP. But uh, the only things I would do during that broadcast would be record riff tracks. Uh, I've done a riff track for the Death Note live action movie, which is up on my YouTube channel now. Originally, I recorded as a test play to put onto the Patreon guys on the channel. But what I'm planning to do with that particularly is I will live broadcast the riff. But if you miss the live broadcast, the only way to see the riffs is to watch them on uh, the Patreon. Because what happened with the Death Note one was that I got a copyright claim on my video, not because of any of the audio being heard or being in my video, but because the claimant heard and checked the length of my video, knew that their song was X amount of time into a film, and then claimed my video based on the timeline of where it should be on my video, without without there being a, without there being any. Uh, mention of the song directly, me mangling one lyric from the song and no audio from the song being included at all because the riff track is silent. The whole point of it is that you hear me but you play the movie yourself separately and then you sync the two of them together. I had that, I had a video, I had a two hour video claimed for that whenever there's no audio from it and I don't want that to happen again and I don't want to actually be putting it out in public because it'll annoy me. <laughs> this is one thing going to, if this is going to happen more than once, I'm not going to use YouTube platform to put those videos up. I'll use another platform. I'll put it on Vimeo. I'll put it on uh, Vidme. I'll put it somewhere else. And I'm not concerned about the ad revenue, but I'm just concerned that somebody else is controlling my videos whenever there literally is none of their content involved in its uh, description at all. Especially uh, with the very faded backdrop that I use to purposely occlude whatever video is being put on. I only ever use that as a visual guideline for people to find their sync if anything's gone wrong because there's no audio from their uh, production at all. So yeah, um, I wanted to, I wanted to do the riff tracks more often, but I wanted to actually figure out a format that would work, that would mean that everybody get everybody can see it, but only people on the Patreon get that for them because it's kind of it's a longer form content. It takes a, a matter on the length of the show or the length of the film. It takes a, a required set down amount of time to prepare and do that. So it kind of I'm not putting it's putting it behind the paywall. Put it behind a paywall, but allowing people to be able to access it in any way, shape, or form. And to be honest, like to get into the behind the paywall, it's a, it's a buck. So if one somebody's willing to pay a buck a month, then they get access to what could be four riff tracks a month. And I, I'm willing to dedicate myself to doing that. So like I said, the schedule will be three days. Don't know which three days yet, but I want to get your help to kind of figure out what's best for the viewing public. Uh, the list of games will go up onto the Patreon page and onto the Facebook page, and I will probably link to a Google Doc on Twitter or on Tumblr. That way you can still get access to the list and be able to reference which games you want to play and put it in the comments. And then after that, we'll be setting the schedule, and then we'll actually work to that three days setup. That's pretty much, oh, that's, that, that's, the, that's the plan. That's the vloggy plan that I kind of came up with here. I know this went a little bit overly long for a vlog, but I'm really appreciative of anybody who actually has stuck around to watch this because it's it, it, it I need to structure this in a way that it schedules my life even more so than it would actually be scheduling for you guys to be able to see it because as it is now, I'm just nail, doing a video whenever it feels like I should and it, it'll burn me out and I'll lose concentration and it keeps me from doing other creative things I would like to do especially this time of year because we're coming up to culture night and I've done a 24 hour film for culture night for the last few years all the time. And like, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want it to come around to it in like in two weeks time, two weeks, that's a week's time. And I don't want to actually be sitting there going like, well, well, I haven't prepared for it or I don't have time to do it. Or there's this video is coming out and I need to actually focus on advertising that. I'm like, no, I'm going to sit down and do little spurts of projects that don't involve me being here and doing this all the time. So that way it's not just guaranteed content that I'm going to make for you guys. It's going to be every single day here on the channels. But it's also going to mean that I will actually be making stuff that you've not seen me do in at least two years. 
that I'm just I miss doing. I miss, I miss doing more elaborate productions, and um, I need to I need to refine my skills. I need to get better at it. So if you guys want to check any of that out, uh, and you want to know more about it, you can always find me on the Facebook page. You can always find me on Twitter, uh, Facebook Pastiche of Skin, Twitter Pastiche of Derm. You can find me on Patreon Pastiche of Skin. Everything goes through the Patreon pretty much at some point now, uh, except for the actual YouTube videos. YouTube videos are scheduled up as they go and go with VidMe. But uh, anything I'm actually going to post in uh, article-wise or uh, information or vlogs about the channel, they'll all be going up on there, so it's a good source to get it from. Or you can catch them on to uh, pasticheoflife.com, which is my original website, but all it is now is an archive of every video I've ever made. You can go to pasticheoflife.com and bookmark it for yourselves, but I honestly don't have the patience to actually redesign that website. But maybe that should be where where all this goes. This maybe this should I maybe this should all conglomerate there since it's already designed as an archiving site, and just have a nice front end to it that you can all interact with. And I would love to actually maybe build a forum back in there if anybody be interested. Uh, it means I, I I don't think people, dude, many people use BB forums anymore. I mean, how many forums are you signed up with and actually registered with? I think I still use ones that I have accounts from from seven or eight years ago, but I haven't signed up for one in a long ass time. So maybe I'll make a wee front page for that and then give people access to the archive and that'll be a future little uh, home for all of this stuff as well. But as it is now, it's split across so many platforms and so many sources and um, hopefully you can all join me and we all gonna get together and do this all at the same time. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you happened to enjoy this discussion, you want to know more about it, you want to talk to me about it, then you can get me on any of the sources that you normally can. You can always get me in the chat for whenever I'm on live. You can always get me on Twitter. You can get me on Facebook. You can get me on all the sources. So feel free to just comment away. I'll see it. Just make sure to say, if you say, then I know. If I know, then we can fix. If we can fix, we can change. And if we can change, we can get good. So a uh, whole premise of all gaming is to get good. So let's get good together. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I will probably continue on the stream after this video. But... I just felt like I needed to get this vlog out and for you guys that actually have joined me to watch it. Let's give you a heads up on the way the channel has been going lately and how I'm looking forward to making more stuff as soon as possible. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see all you dudes in the next vlog. Bye. <laughs>